first step in the process of conducting a vegetation transect is to establish the location of the study transects. This can be done through temporary transects or permanent transects. In total, there should be five permanent or temporary transects. This video shows the initial steps in creating a permanent transect monument. This involves digging a hole in the ground with a post hole digger and then hammering a piece of rebar down into the hole. Once this is done, a concrete mix can then be poured into the hole up to a height just above the ground level. This will create a concrete mound with the rebar sticking out of the middle. Permanent transects allow the study of long-term changes in the repairing complex. An aerial photo of the location can aid in determining the best places for the five transects. In addition to the concrete monument being shown in the video, other types of permanent transect monuments such as a nail in the tree can also be used. Once the rebar has been added to the hole and hammered down in, the concrete can then be poured into it. It's important to make sure the concrete is not too wet or too dry. With the transects established, the next step is to conduct the actual study according to the USDA line intercept method outlined in the Monitoring the Vegetation Resource in Repairing Areas Report by Alma H. Winward. The following are the steps to conduct the study. First, start at one of the monuments at either end of the transect. Then, start walking along the transect, counting the number of paces as you go. At each change in vegetation community type, Stop and record both the dominant vegetation type, making up the community, and the number of paces for that community type. Start walking again and restart your pace count. Repeat the previous two steps as you walk along the transect. At the end, you will have a list of vegetation community types with a corresponding number of paces next to each. This first vegetation community ends just before the transect intersects with the choke cherry seen just next to the technician. This vegetation community looks to be dominated mostly by grasses. The second vegetation community covers the choke cherry section of the transect at this point. The next vegetation community changes back to one being dominated by grasses in this section of the transect. When one particular vegetation community is broken up by other communities as the grasses are here, it is important to be consistent in how you label each community in your notes. At the end, when finalizing the collected data, all the paces for the grasses and other data for the grasses, for example, will be added together. This will be done for each of the communities.
The vegetation communities are made up of the plants growing on either side of you as you walk the transect. A community is defined as having a consistent makeup of vegetation growing within it. This could be all alder, for example, or perhaps 20% willow and 80% alder. The process outlined in this video should be repeated for each of the five transects. Once the data is collected, it is then possible to determine the coverage of the transect and percent for each of the vegetation communities. This will be covered in further detail later on. As shown in the previous video, you can avoid obstacles in your transect by just counting your paces till you get to the obstacle and then moving over perpendicular to the transect until you have a clear path running parallel to the transect. At this point, continue walking the transect and count your paces like you normally would until you can move back to the main transect path. Just remember that the vegetation community for that part of the transect does not necessarily shift with you. Here's a visual example that might help you understand this. With the data collected from all five transects, you end up with a table similar to the following. The community type and number of paces will be different, but otherwise the table you create will be very similar. By calculating the percent composition for each of the community types, changes over time in the distribution of each community type within the transect can easily be determined. In addition, this data can be entered into ArcMap and added to a GIS layer. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this has proven helpful and good luck with your future field work. Thank you. the movement of water that's my purpose whether on above or below the earth's surface in the continuous cycle my work's never done because i'm driven by energy from the sun uh, i travel through the sea through the air through the ground you could say that water really gets around but in fact most water's just chilling in the oceans only a small fraction is really in motion at any given time but yo that's the way it goes when we're studying the voyages of h2o in the cycle water changes states at various places of three states being ice liquid and water vapor but this cycle strays from the norm Cause through the process, water still keeps the same structural form While other cycles involve chemical change Water may change states, but its structure stays the same I rise to the sky from the sea below Then down to the ground is rain and snow I keep it moving, moving, cause I'm the water cycle Moving, moving, cause I'm the water cycle I rise to the sky from the sea below Then down to the ground is rain and snow I keep it moving, moving, cause I'm the water cycle Moving, moving so when water transforms from liquid to gas and rises up into the atmosphere, that's evaporation. A process made possible by energy from the sun, also known as solar radiation. And when there's water vapor in the sky reforms into liquid water droplets, that's condensation. And when this water falls back down to the earth as rain, snow, hail, and sleet, that's precipitation. Plants have their own type of evaporation through their stomata, which is called transpiration. So collectively, the term used for transpiration plus all other evaporation is evapotranspiration two more terms to add to your collection the movement of water through the air is advection and speaking of keeping it moving understand that runoff is water flowing across the land i rise to the sky from the sea below then down to the ground is rain and snow i keep it moving moving because i'm the water cycle